Hello everybody, welcome to Letters from Jen. We have been doing a series on why doesn't my faith work? And very often when we find we've been praying and believing God for a certain breakthrough, we just don't seem to get the result that we've been waiting for. And immediately we question, well, why doesn't faith work? Well, today I'm going to speak to you about two specific things that we need to pay attention to in order to make sure that our faith is activated and stays alive so we can have a confidence to ask God for what we need and what his word promises with the confidence that we will receive it. Now it's easy to feel disappointed when the things that you believe in God to do for you just don't seem to happen. Often people will write in and they ask why God doesn't hear their prayers and they feel so despondent in their Christian walk because it seems that all of their heartfelt requests just fall on deaf ears. Now if you can relate to any of this, I pray that this series of letters touches your heart and brings you a very clear and understanding of how good God is and how much he loves you and how you can practically understand faith and put it to work effectively in your life. Now in the previous letter if you remember we discovered that faith is not a whimsical wishful state of mind but rather it's a spiritual force that has the ability to reach into the spiritual realm and bring whatever God has promised us into our natural reality. You see, faith is the way that God designed for us to live as people who overcome in this life. It's a way that we can appropriate every freedom and promise that Jesus paid the price for when he went to the cross. And it's the only way we can enjoy the benefits of personally knowing God. It's also how we live in continuous victory over our enemy, the devil. Now we also learned that we increase our faith by meditating on the Word of God, believing what it says as our final authority, and being sure to keep our words and our conversations in line with what it says. You see, the important key is to never change what we say to align with our circumstances, but rather keep our words true to what God's Word says. You see, even if situations appear to stubbornly stay the same and not change, we must never speak contrary to what the Word says. No circumstance has ever and nor will it ever change what God says. It's His Word that remains forever the same and has the power to change our circumstances, making them line up with what He says. So this means the problem with our faith not working is not on God's side. You see, His Word always produces what it says. Isaiah 55 11 says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void without producing any effect or being useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So what prevents our faith from working? Well, one prevention, is doubt. Don't doubt. Often when we don't see the results that we want, when we want, doubt sets in. See the first telltale sign of doubt is in our words. So just as faith is carried on our words that align with scripture, doubt is carried on our negative words and it has the power to make our faith completely inoperative. Now the book of James says that we mustn't even expect to receive anything if we have doubt. James 1 6 to 8 says, only it must be in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers or hesitates or doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything that he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, doubting, he is unable and unreliable and uncertain about everything that he thinks or feels or decides. 
So the Bible says we must keep a vigilant watch over the words that we speak. So, determine to never allow your words to carry doubt because they disagree with God's own words. Now, another deterrent or um, way to stop our faith from working is our incorrect perception of God and His Word. We have to see God's Word as Himself. You see, something that will help you counter that temptation to doubt is to change your perspective of God's Word. It's easy for Christians to fall into the trap of seeing the Word as a mechanical formula instead of a personal representation of the person of God. Now, our confidence and expectation must lie in our trust of the God we intimately know. Our dependency is rooted in understanding His absolute love and faithfulness towards us. Otherwise, the Word is just a book. Now, it isn't a mechanical formula. And when we give ourselves to God's Word, we actually give ourselves to truly knowing who He is. This is where we see that His ways are perfect and His promises are true. In fact, we fall in love with Him and His Word. Loving and embracing God through His Word actually begins a transformation process in us from the inside out. You see, we are changed by knowing Him. Our thoughts become influenced by His thoughts. And as um, our thoughts change, so do our actions change. So do our attitudes change until we begin to speak words of faith that aren't just empty uh, resuscitations or declarations that are empty, they are full of power because we're going to speak from lives that have been divinely influenced by our relationship with the Word. Now, I earnestly encourage you to take the time to purposefully give yourself to God's Word this week. Each day, determine to find out more about Him as you spend time meditating on the truth. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the person of Jesus to you and make His words come alive in your heart so that the transformation process can begin inside you. So as you delight in God's Word, you will delight in Him too and in His ways. This is where He places His pure and wonderful desires for you into your heart and your mind so that you can walk in them. Remember Psalm 34? It says, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. Now in our next letter, we're going to continue speaking about some of the things that can prevent our faith from working and being as effective as the Word says it should be. But just to recap what we've learned so far, we can find there's a great confidence we have in our prayer life and, and believing in God when we stop doubting. We stop uh, wondering if God's word is true or if his promises are for us or not. Remember what James said? If you're going to doubt when you pray, then don't even expect to receive anything because that's not faith at all. Faith is, God, I believe in you. I believe your promises are true. If your word says it, then it's for me and I will have it. So don't let doubt contaminate your faith because it just won't work. The second thing that we spoke about is how important it is to understand that God's word is not full of mechanical formulas. Rather, it is a representation of who he is. And the more you fall in love with his word, the more you fall in love with the person that he is. You begin to love him. You begin to love his ways. And in that love process, a transformation takes place where suddenly his thoughts become your thoughts. His attitude becomes your attitude and his ways or actions become your actions. When this happens, we suddenly realize that his very desires become your desires. And so the transformation has happened. And when I pray now, I'm going to pray according to his desires that have become mine. Let me tell you, that is going to revolutionize your faith when you come to him in prayer. Until next week, God bless you and goodbye.